Welcome to Models, Games, Dioramas, and Things. What can you imagine today? Models, Games, Dioramas, and Things is a place where we show techniques and alternatives that are utilized for detailing models, dioramas, vignettes, game terrain, and more. We share practical and alternative solutions for makers and artists. Come join us in the journey. What can you imagine today? If you're new to this channel, welcome. We hope you enjoy what you see and get a little information to help you on your journey. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you. With that out of the way, let's get to it. At the end of this video, I'll share some insights into a not so common neuromuscular disease that I'm affected by. It causes poor function in my hands to say the least and has had me wheelchair bound since 2007. This is the last video of three for the Old Faithful Diorama. Links to my earlier videos are in the description below. In the first video, I talked about how to build the base for just about any basic diorama. In the second video, I demonstrated the final coating of plaster and installing a resin river. In this video, I will show the underbrush, trees, standing dead trees, and fallen dead trees known as deadfall. We will also finish the trim sides. Let's take a look. At this point, the subject of the diorama is about 40% complete as I begin working on the side trim and background. Here you can see the background being prepared for installation. I measured and marked the trim and cut the pieces with a back saw and fit them into place. Here the background is being applied to one of the trim strips. A matte varnish is mixed with dilute PVA as an adhesive for the background. A smooth coating is applied ensuring that it is even on the entire surface, particularly the edges so the corners do not curl up. The background is then securely pressed into place ensuring all of the bubbles are released from behind the print. Notice I'm not using any mechanical devices as they may tear the now wet paper. You may notice a crease, it's quite obvious. I dampened the back of the paper so that I could stretch this crease out as I applied it to the background trim piece. I continue pressing the background image to the trim and apply weights allowing the image to dry for about two hours. I sand the sides smooth and even, ready to receive the trim. I check to make sure that the sides are square, vertical, plumb, and all that good stuff. Once the body of the diorama sides are plumb, smooth, and square, Construction adhesive is applied and we begin adding the trim starting with the background. After the background has dried, it's adhered to the base of the diorama along with other trim pieces and clamped into place. This is then allowed to dry overnight. A thought about drying times. In most instances, I plan out my work so that when things need to dry, they come together near the end of a work session, thereby not losing time during construction. When there are short intervals of dry time, I plan additional work unrelated to the area that needs to dry. Trees are measured for correct height, painted, and cut so as to not have them appear uniform in shape and look unnatural. The trees on the backdrop present to us a specific color or shades of color. 
These I try to match using airbrush techniques on the trees once they're trimmed and shaped as desired. The best way to determine color shading is to sample the paint, allowing it to dry thoroughly. After sizing, shaping, and color correcting, trees are placed on the diorama and glued into place. Undergrowth is placed under the trees and fixed with matte-based adhesive. It's better to have placed this prior to the trees, but knowing the extent that the trees were going to spread was a little difficult to understand in advance. After applying adhesive, I sprinkle underbrush adjacent to the adhesive and then blow lightly into place with a straw. Next, I prepare and install what are called standing dead trees. These trees are dead because they were killed by fire or by the intense heat of, of the surrounding ground over time. These are made with a toothpick or sandwich pick and stained or painted in an appropriate color that illustrates standing dead wood. I use a scribe to pierce into the base and glue them into place. At the same time, deadfall logs are prepared using the same stain or paint technique. Deadfall trees are trees that have fallen over or have been blown over and now lay on the ground. Here, grass tufts are glued into place with a variety of colors and shapes. The colors were airbrushed onto the tufts using a variegated paint pattern so that the tufts did did not look alike in color or shape. Water effects are added to the river to form ripples on the main surface of the river and white water where the white water is flowing over a fallen log that crosses the river. The ripples are made with gloss varnish. After applying the gloss varnish, it is blown onto with a straw or an airbrush set at a very low setting to create ripples. White water is created by mixing gloss varnish with snow effects and applied at the point where the log crosses the river. One of the last items to be prepared is the gusher of the geyser Old Faithful itself. It starts with a base of polyfill sized and shaped to a scale being rendered here. This is followed up with a light coat of gloss polycrylic mixed with silver mica flakes for sparkle. Those are used sparingly so as to not look like a white Christmas tree. The trim wood is stained with a suitable oil stain making sure not to streak it. Rubbing with the direction of the grain minimizes this streaking effect. I used three coats of stain for a dark appearance. Finally, the trim is finished with a water-based gloss polyurethane, making sure not to streak it. It is brushed with the direction of the grain. This minimizes bubbles and produces a high gloss finish. Here, I used three coats of polycrylic for a high gloss appearance. Please like this video, comment, I would love to hear from you, and subscribe. All these actions will truly help me help you. Thank you. What can you imagine today? If there is a specific model or diorama you want to see built here, drop a comment about it below. I'll try to put it into future videos. After all, like Ender said, I can't do all the thinking around here. As a teaser, here are a couple of images of a diorama that I'm going to build soon. At first glance, there are many steps to the build. The first is a model of a Russian T-3485 from 1944. The second is a German Fiesler V-156 Stork. Both will be featured on the next diorama. I'd like to share with you something that is very close to me. In fact, it's something that affects me. For those that can see me in person, it's very evident. Maybe not my exact affliction, but 
that I am profoundly hurt. For those of you watching here on YouTube, you mostly see my hands. You can see some things there, and you might think some things. But let me share with you, like Paul Harvey said, the rest of the story. I have a neuromuscular condition called Charcot-Marie-Tooth disease, CMT for short. It is a genetic disease and by definition, I have had it all of my life. However, the profound effects did not directly trouble me until I was about 30 years old. I went through numerous misdiagnoses about what it was that was wrong with me. That was until about 2005 when I was properly diagnosed. Here is this description from the website of Charcot Marie Tooth Association. CMT is the acronym for Charcot Marie Tooth Disease, named for the three physicians who first described it in 1886. Doctors Jean Martin Charcot and Pierre Marie, both from France, and Howard Henry Tooth of the United Kingdom. It is estimated that it affects more than 3 million people worldwide, regardless of gender, race, or ethnicity. CMT is a group of like diseases caused by inherited genetic mutations. CMT damages the peripheral nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord. The nervous system consists of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of all of the nerves that branch off the central nervous system and extend to the feet and hands. CMT is called a neuromuscular condition because it is the failure of the nerves that cause the malfunctioning of the muscles, unlike muscular dystrophy, which affects the muscles themselves. Peripheral nerves that control muscle movement are often described as being like electrical wires or a coaxial cable. Each nerve contains bundles of nerve fibers with an inner core, the axon, that passes signals to the muscles causing them to move. The axon is wrapped in insulation. When the myelin is damaged, this is known as type, CMT type 1 and CMT type 4. The nerve impulses are conducted more slowly than normal. If the axon itself is damaged, this is called CMT type 2. Here, the speed of the nerve conduction is almost normal, but the strength of the signal is reduced. Both impairments impair electrical messaging to the muscles and therefore malfunctioning of the muscles, weakness and eventual wasting away. All types of CMT are progressive, meaning the symptoms worsen over time. CMT can be passed on from one generation to the next. It can also occur as a new or spontaneous mutation. Scientists have identified over 100 different gene mutations causing CMT. Here are the ways that CMT affects me. Frequent tripping, ankle sprains, burning or pins and needles sensation in the feet and hands, the thumb and the forefinger, loss of overall hand strength, loss of the ability to feel light touch and the overall sense of touch, poor tolerance for cold temperatures, for some that would be heat as well, inability to perceive temperature change, inability to sense where one's body is in space or proprioception, muscle cramps or muscle spasms, absent or reduced reflexes, chronic fatigue, and swallowing difficulties. I share with you these facts not to invoke some type of sympathy for myself, 
but to share the knowledge of what this debilitating disease is and can do to people who might not know they have it. On the other hand, many who are afflicted by CMT have discovered its effects through their teen years. Thank you for watching. Again, please subscribe, like, and share and comment below. What can you imagine today?